Thanks to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Hi, my name is Sophia and welcome to my tiny house where I live in Los Angeles with my dog Vito. I'm really passionate about music. I sing in a chorus. I studied voice with my grandma growing up. I have music stuff everywhere. I have music books everywhere. And that is something that I'm always doing. So this is a home filled with lots of dog and lots of song all the time, which is nothing more than I could have asked for. I am recently 23 years old. I wanted a tiny house for a couple reasons. So I had originally looked at what it was like to live off grid. I thought it was the coolest thing on the planet to be self-sustaining in a way. I was struggling a lot with things at the time. My grandma had started to get sick, so I kind of wanted to have some control over my life. I was excited on tiny homes and really got into it and tried to figure out how I could make it work for myself. I mean, it's me and my dog, so don't need a ton of space. I didn't have a lot of stuff. I had just finished school. I didn't have furniture in the way that most adults do, like trying to downsize. I was trying to grow into myself, and so I thought that tiny, tiny living would be a really cool way to go about it. My grandma, who I loved more than anything on the planet, my complete soulmate, she, as much as I adored her, allowed things to define who she was. She lived in a 14-room house at 89 years old with my grandpa, and neither of them used more than two rooms, three including the kitchen, and she completely allowed that to take over, and now I'm seeing the unraveling of that. My parents and my uncle are trying to get rid of all the stuff in their house, and it's just an absolute nightmare. You get so much mental energy taken from you when you have so much stuff. Like, it's more things to keep track of. It's more things to spend money on. It's not financially stable to keep spending money on just adding to your collection. I mean, you're allowed to have your passions, but ultimately, in the end, your stuff isn't what defines you. Are you trying to eat healthy, but frustrated by how expensive natural and organic groceries can be? Well, Thrive Market is your stress-free solution. It's an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone with guaranteed savings on every order. It's true, I saved $22 on my recent order. I love how Thrive Market keeps my grocery shopping super simple with its user-friendly and cute website. There are many ways to easily search their product catalog to find just what I'm looking for and often discover new great products too, like these reusable wax food wraps. As a Thrive Market member, you'll save on every order you make of the highest quality organic and sustainable products. And if you find a lower price somewhere else, they'll match it. Even better, if you don't make your annual $60 membership back in savings, Thrive Market will credit you the difference. Join Thrive Market today to get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to 60 bucks. See the link in the description. I've lived in my tiny house for about five and a half months since February of 2023, and it is 24 feet by eight and a half feet wide and about 13 feet high, so standard road height. So on the exterior over here, you're gonna see that I have four solar panels. Each one of them has 235 watts that uses. I got them for $50 each on Facebook Marketplace, super accessible for people that everyone gets confused on solar panel setup. Took me about 10 minutes to do the whole thing. It's really user friendly. And over there, it's connected to a Blue Eddy um, battery system. I have three batteries. I have one generator, all electric. The whole house is powered by these four solar panels. So it's super, super user friendly again, and I can control the Blue Eddy app on my phone. So if I'm at work, I can check where the battery system's at and see how much power I'm making. I am hooked up to water, so I'm not fully off-grid. Most people who are completely off-grid have a water collection system. So how I found my parking spot, I actually went on Airbnb at the time, and I messaged about 150 or 200 people who looked like they would have space on their property. So that was anybody whose preferences said farm or RV or already existing tiny house. And I messaged and I said, hey, this is a little unconventional, but if you or somebody you know might have space for me to put a tiny house on the property, then let me know this is my number. Airbnb is a little funky with sharing phone numbers, but you can do it if you type it out. It was 
a lot of trial and error there, but I found a woman who said, I don't, but my neighbor does. And that ended up being where I'm at on this beautiful, beautiful uh, horse ranch. I'd love to show you the inside, so come follow me. Welcome to my tiny house. It was built by Corrales Tiny Homes and it is about 220 square feet. And you can see it's a super open layout and I have a lot of storage space, which makes it super feasible for me to fit all of my stuff in and for my dog to live very comfortably. So in this entryway space, you're gonna see I keep a lot of storage over here. This unit is really deep. It has several, excuse me, Vito. You're gonna see it's stuffed right now with backpacks for outdoor stuff, but it has a lot of deep closet space in here. It gets to host all of my outdoor items and to-go items for the dog. It makes things really handy to go. So this is my little kitchen space. I have about eight feet of countertop here. All of the butcher block countertop was locally sourced in Durango, Colorado. All of the wood in the house actually that was used for the project was all sourced locally. And in my countertop space here, I also have this propane oven and stove. It is not very small. It's completely normal size. Can cook a Thanksgiving turkey if I chose to do so. And I have this really big range hood fan that works amazingly when I'm cooking. And having done, they did it all in this beautiful cedar pattern and I absolutely love it. It makes it super functional and just stunning to look at. And behind that, you're gonna see some very unique tiles that I chose through the process. Obviously, I love color. I love the Spanish style homes and I love the Spanish style of these Talvera tiles. So all of these are handmade all in Mexico and I wanted to pick out the colors to go exactly with everything else. Make it busy but not too crazy so I have the yellows, the reds, and the blues all over the place and made sure that matched and that was really important to me to have this and to have my red roof to mimic that Spanish style little casa that I was looking for so I absolutely love the tiles. When I was picking out this fridge, it's gigantic, fits all of my stuff in here. Very tall, very narrow, but it is a full person fridge, something that's not typical in tiny houses to have a full size fridge. But I color match that with my cabinets to make sure that it was really smooth flowing from one room to the next, even though it's one big space. So all of my cabinets across the house are all soft close. So you pull them out, everything is super functional and they're huge deep cabinets that I have never any worry. I keep all the snacks down here, they're huge. If you wanna use it for pots and pans, and several cabinets to do it. And this huge farm sink that I've got can fit way too many dishes, so it doesn't help me to clean as much as I should, but it transitions right over into this bar top. This bar top I think is absolutely stunning, again, locally sourced. Something that I struggle with that I really wanted to make my house work for me is having ADHD. That means a lot of open storage space. It also means a lot of flexible seating. I'm able to sit here at these bar stools. I can stand here, I have a walking treadmill that I can put very easily underneath and I can use my laptop up here and I can comfortably eat without the food being up to my chin. So as a young working professional, it's really important for me to have a space for my office stuff. All of my toiletries and office supplies are in this cabinet. Again, a very, very deep cabinet because I could give it a very sizable hug. Um, <laughs> it's a very large cabinet. I keep my printer up here at the top. That's really easy and I can pull the wire down, attached to my laptop and that's easy to use. I really committed to wanting tiny home life in the summer of 2021. So I was committed to it, I was ready. I was actually living in LA that time for the summer for an internship and trying to get my stuff sorted out and figuring out what life would look like for me here. And so I said, I'm gonna do this. I'm crazy for doing it, but I'm gonna find land in Los Angeles and I found it and I needed to find a property before I got the house. So October, my mom and I actually found a company called Holy Ground, Holy Ground Tiny Homes, and it looked awesome. I spoke to their sales rep, naive as I was, unfortunately at the time, I was all in. They said there was a discount if you paid in full. I got a loan to pay it off, and it was supposed to be ready in June, and what ended up happening was just they went silent after I paid for it. Months of darkness, weren't answering calls, weren't answering emails. I just thought they were busy. I kept my head on straight and just, I look back and I feel so foolish for it. I mean, there were so many red flags, but I kept, I was paying off my loan. I was doing my thing. I was living at home at the time to help take care of my grandma and to be at home with my family. 
And so I finally got in contact them, with them sometime in the spring, maybe February, March-ish of 22. And they said, oh, we're just delayed. We're back listed on houses. We have this, we have to catch up here. I said, okay. And then they kept pushing the date. And the day after my grandma passed away, so that would have been May 11th of 22, I get a call from Holy Ground saying, oh my gosh, um, how are you doing? We wanted to call back and say this. Uh, your house is almost ready. We're getting there to the floor plan. Uh, we're so close. And I was beside myself. And now I have these folks telling me, oh, we're so sorry. We're going to make sure she's in this house with you. At the time I was touched because I didn't realize it was all gonna come crashing down. Holy ground, how their company came to fruition was that their CEO labeled this tiny home building company that was a nonprofit to help drug addicts, alcoholics rebuild their life, people who were previously incarcerated, rebuild their lives. And awesome mission, that's really cool, go for it. But they misused that, that's not at all what they were doing. Also, all of this is fully available for people publicly. There's no private information that I've shared. Just wanted to say that. This is all on their Google reviews. So right behind me, you're gonna see the living room space. So this couch, again, as everybody talks about functionality in a tiny home, this couch folds down into a full queen size bed, can comfortably fit guests, and I can use the back for storage. So I keep all my suitcases back there. The bigger items, you'll see I have my guitar back there. Haven't quite figured out if I wanna keep it there yet. I have a little bean bag here for my dog to hang out on. And I've got two little side tables that pop up and I can actually fold behind the couch. So on this side, I've got this little side table, got it from Target for like 15 bucks. And this couch is very, very comfortable. I'm able to sit here with the dog and watch TV and I have this beautiful, beautiful view on the side with the, the cedar window sills across the house. And I just, it's a very easy, comfortable space. The air conditioner heater system I have, I actually have a Pioneer Mini split up here. Works really well. As of late though, it has been having some issues. I cleaned the filter, it wasn't working. It looks like there might be a leakage issue, which happens. All homes have their problems. This is a wonderful system. It was just working until it wasn't. So I think I need to adjust something there on my end. But this fan up here does really help with circulation through the entire house. So one thing that's important is because the way that my loft is set up, I have a bookshelf that blocks most of the, the loft space, which has its pros and cons. But this fan really does help pull some of the air to the back of the loft to make it cool off. So right over here is my little laundry room area. So I have a full combo washer dryer down here. So with my little laundry machine here, I'm able to take my clothes out directly. And since the bathroom is right behind me, I can throw dirty clothes directly into the washer, wash it, and then I'm able to fold right on top of here. I can bring a stool over, I can stand, I can do whatever I need. And then I literally take from dirty clothes, clean, fold it, and then right over here, I'm putting it away. It is a very easy process for me to do that. This closet is something that I think was found at Lowe's and it perfectly fits over here. I have a lot of work clothes. I have a lot of casual stuff. I have a lot of stuff for hiking and the dog fits. It's huge. I don't know. I'm 5'4 and it's like a much taller, much deeper arms width <laughs> figuring out. So I love this thing. The storage is really important. Right behind me from the laundry room, you'll follow me into the bathroom. So here in the bathroom, you're going to see that I have a little custom sink over here. This was also built locally in Durango, Colorado. I wanted it to keep matching the Spanish style aesthetic that I was going for. So I have this little clay sink. Um, I have some terracotta tiles down here that match the Talvera tiles. They're the same ones that I chose in the kitchen over here. My shower is a full normal 36 inch by 36 inch standard shower, six foot plus height over here. And something that I really love about my shower is that it has a dual hanger that this can slide down as well uh, for hand washing and also this rainfall type shower. It is awesome. I prefer to use the smaller one just for water conservation. And something that I really love that Corrales Tiny Homes does is put this little inlet in the wall so I didn't even have to rely on getting a little bench or extra shelves. They just did this inlet for me. I installed my own mirror over here, just supplemental so I could keep all of my other toiletry vanity things in that side. And I do use a composting toilet, so I use a separate, pretty popular in the tiny house community. I love it, it's super easy to maintain, doesn't really have any smell at all. I have an exhaust fan for any extra humidity, residue, whatever it is to get out that way, um, just like any normal bathroom would. 
this is actually where my water heater is. So this little cabinet was built specifically in mind with the NOAA certification is required to have an encavement for your water heater. So this water heater, I've absolutely loved, no problems with it. And that's propane on the outside that uses that. July, right before I left home, I spoke to one of the folks at Holy Ground and I said, oh, what's going on? My house, you said I was, there were three, three on the list. I was the next one. I was the fourth house. What is going on? How many houses are in front of me? She said, oh, I don't exactly know that number. I said, can you look? She said, okay, give me a minute. She says about a hundred. That's a lot bigger than three. Like that was, I lost my mind that day. On the phone, I was very frustrated. I said, how does it go from three to a hundred that you're behind on? A hundred homes that you've sold and not built. How is that possible? A week before I started at my new job, we get a letter from Holy Ground that they had filed for uh, chapter 11 bankruptcy and were being investigated for fraud. $160,000 in unexplained money withdrawals and suspicious trips to Las Vegas has convinced the feds to investigate an Inglewood company that makes tiny homes. It's a problem solvers update to a story we brought you in October about Holy Ground Real Estate and its CEO, Matthew Sowash. The company filed for bankruptcy after numerous customers said they paid for tiny homes but never got them. Court records say the company lost nearly $6 million of customers' money during the two years leading up to bankruptcy. Now, a federal judge has given the Department of Justice permission to investigate the book and the bank's accounts of Holy Grounds and make criminal referrals if it finds fraud. The CEO took $6 million from almost 200 creditors, including myself, took $6 million and somehow had no assets, had no homes. The homes that had been built were horrible. There were, they were falling apart when they arrived to the people. Then it really hit the fan because I had no home to get to. And I had been displaced so many times at this point. And I just felt so lost. And I was living with this woman for two months and then she wanted her space back, which is totally fine. I knew it was just temporary. So I ended up living with a friend that I met at the dog park. And I lived with him for the next four, four and a half months. I was there sharing a studio garage space with one other person, their dog, my dog, myself, living out of a suitcase, um, working full time, plus some to try to recover the money. And so then I found Corrales Tiny Homes, also based out of Colorado, and absolutely fell in love with them. Signed in December. What convinced me was their communication was not what I was used to with Holy Ground. I thought Holy Ground's communication was the norm, which I was completely mistaken by. Danny and Alyssa at Corrales were the most incredible communicators. Any question I had, any concern I had, and I did have concerns because I just had all of this money, my home, everything just gone. They answered all of my questions and then some I was on FaceTime with them all the time. When building a house, there's always going to be challenges, no matter if it's a tiny house, no matter if it's a traditionally sized house, no matter RV, whatever. There will be problems, whether that's build problems or user error person living there issues. And so one challenge that I had was that there was a leak in the roof and I had no idea where this water was coming from. It was that month of rain we were getting in LA that it was just unheard of. It doesn't rain here. And they drove from Colorado to Los Angeles to fix it for me. Nobody does that. They would have said, oh, figure it out, hire somebody. Or they couldn't have just not answered me. It ghosted me. They could have done that. They didn't. So if you follow me over here, this is actually where the stairs are to go up to the loft. You'll notice that they're not traditional stairs that are typically built in a tiny house. There's no ladder in the house. There's no stairs that lead out into the living room. This is actually built on the hitch of the house. So when you see that, you're going to notice that it's in a spiral staircase pattern. Corrales Tiny Homes really did a cool job figuring out how to do this. And it's narrow, but it's easy for me to walk up. I don't have to do any crawling when I get to the top of the stairs. I literally just stand up and sit right into bed. It is a queen size bed, very big loft. I do have some inches on either side. There is a little triangular space up on this corner that I use that more as a nightstand than I do immediately next to the bed. Along with that bookshelf that I have, I have some extra room there. As a person who's about 5'5", five, five, just about 5'5", five, five, I do have some room above me. And there are two skylights above my bed on either side 
two windows and this is the egress window in case there's ever an, an emergency I can just pop that window right off and get out the back that way I have some storage with all of my extra books on this side and other personal belongings and that also on the far side above my water heater is where my water tank is it's a 50 gallon water tank the 50 gallon water tank honestly lasts me about three to four days depending on how often I'm using it I've stretched it up to a week I time it out so I'm not going to take a really long shower and do my laundry and do dishes all that day what helps for me is breaking it up to save water but I am hooked up to water so I can fill it up anytime that I need this tiny house cost $90,000 plus then delivery, which was from a third party, which I think delivery was about $2,000 to get from where they were just outside of Durango to where I am in LA. I mentioned before, when my grandma had passed away, her estate started to settle. The money for this house came from that by means of my family, which I, again, I'm incredibly grateful for. That is a very privileged response to say. Prior to that, my family and I have suffered severe financial hardship, but my parents were scared for me to be so far away from home on my own volition, but not having a place to live and literally sleeping on people's couches and chairs and in spare rooms and strangers' houses. It was not a safe way to be living, and when you have family resources that can help, they didn't hesitate to do that. So I am really grateful for that, but there are financing options. Previously, I had used financing options for Holy Grounds Home that I bought, and I used Lightstream with them. And they were awesome. I loved Lightstream. They were super easy to use. I love tiny house life. It is a really big learning curve, though. It is my first place that I've lived in by myself. It is my first time living away from home, aside from living in college and other, you know, very close proximity to my family. Tiny house life is incredible. It feels so peaceful. For my tiny house parking spot, I pay $600 a month, and that includes my water, Wi-Fi on the property, and the physical space. I have use of whatever parts of the property that I want. Again, when I tell people that in Los Angeles, people are paying well over $1,800 a month for a studio, the same exact square footage as my tiny house, in the middle of nowhere, and it doesn't have windows. <laughs> it looks horrible and isn't nearly as livable as being on, what, four acres of property. and fresh air and I can see stars. That's unheard of in Los Angeles too. So yeah, it's, um, it's worth it. The logistics of tiny home life, I'm responsible for everything. I don't have a landlord to come and fix the water for me. I have to do that on my own. I have to do the AC, I have to do the plumbing. I have maintained many, many titles. I am HVAC person, I am plumber, I am interior designer. I have learned so much about myself in what is the most challenging but most rewarding thing on the planet and living off grid i'm completely solar powered living off grid is such a beautiful thing that i can work with the land that i'm on and so grateful for being in the location that i'm at that i have that capacity the only thing i can't collect is rainwater because it doesn't really rain here but it is so wonderful and being able to wake up every day and have everything that physically that I love in a space that I can see all of it and I can point to anything on my wall and say this is my story behind this this is this but it doesn't take mental energy out of my head because there's nothing it's so small and this is me just starting my life I'm 23 I have so much time left to live and I just have it all like nightly tied in a little bow with me and I have my dog with me it's just amazing I love it Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks again to Thrive Market. See the link below for a special offer.